So for the last two weeks, I have been using the M2 MacBook Air as my daily computer. Now I have used it to edit videos, write scripts, video calls, and basically use it to add more of my digital footprints into the world. Now, this version of the M2 MacBook Air is the cheapest. This is the base model that has 256 gigs of storage, eight gigs of unified memory, as well as an eight core CPU and GPU in space gray. Now, I have an opinion or a few opinions on who exactly this is for. Hey guys, my name is KJ Elwes, and even though the M2 MacBook Air is $200 more expensive than the M1, it definitely has its advantages. Now for one, I have enjoyed my time with this laptop. The physical attributes are what I love about it the most. It has a square design that is all around, making it easier to fit into most bags with its 12 inch frame. Now a little fun fact, this is almost the same size as my iPad Air 4. So imagine having the same size, but about three or four times the power. That's pretty dope. Now the M2 design has also been updated to match Apple's current design language for its hardware. Now from the iPhone 13 to the iPads and now of course the laptops with that square design. Now even though it's more expensive, it definitely has an upgrade in terms of our power and ability. It's better than the M1 in single and multi-core performances while having the same number of cores. And that's pretty impressive when you think about it to go from a great score to an even better one. Now there are other improvements within the M2 that I liked a whole lot and that's when it came to video editing and processing. Now the media encoder that has been taken from the M1 Pro processors allows the M2 MacBook Air to go above and beyond its weight. Now as I said, this laptop is for people that are going back to school and want something new or you know, shiny or content creators that want a bit of power when it comes to video editing and because of that encoder that I just talked about, you don't need to worry about overheating issues when editing and rendering. Now in terms of games, I don't play a lot of PC games because I have a PS5 console, but I do not recommend this for high graphic games like Apex Legends for example, because it only has a passive cooling system. Now if you insist on in getting a Mac though, you should definitely get one with a fan. And speaking of cooling, there have been a few rumors that the M2 MacBook Air overheats when you're working. Well, you have to really, and I mean really, really try to get this thing to overheat by running various benchmark tests back to back. Now, if you are a reviewer, sure, that will most likely happen, but an everyday passive user is not going to do that. Now, even when editing with all the clips and overlays on top of each other in Final Cut, the CPU did not throttle once, and that was pretty good. On to more things I liked about the M2 MacBook Air is the keyboard. That may seem trivial to some people, but to me, the keyboard is one of the most imperative features when choosing a laptop, especially as a content creator and an MBA student. And the keyboard here is pretty good. It adds to the awesome keyboard from the M1 MacBook Air. And I also like that they increased each key, making sure you hit each intended one every single time. Now I have written a few scripts with this and also on the iMac. And I will say I prefer writing on the laptop instead of the iMac because it's very easy to get going in a typing rhythm. And once you start, you can't really stop. And that is the most important function if I'm being honest. Now my iMac keyboard is nice and all, but it does take a while before I get into that rhythm. Now something that bugs me about the M2 MacBook Air and I'm not sure why they did this, but this only comes with Thunderbolt 3, while Pro laptops have Thunderbolt 4. This basically means that your M2 will only export to one single display. While this may not be an issue to some people, if you work from home or you're managing different projects, or you work in tech, or you just multitask a lot, this will hinder your productivity. Now, you may say Apple does not market the M2 as a Pro laptop, but come on, there are laptops out there for half the price of the M2 and provide this feature. An M2 that has a hard time throttling or doesn't even overheat on any instance cannot support a dual screen. That is kind of a deciding factor if I'm being honest. If you want to have a dual screen, then maybe you should consider having another laptop than the M2 MacBook Air. The display is probably one of the best upgrades from the M1. Now, it's not exactly the biggest upgrade, but it's noticeable. First of all, this allows for more screen real estate when using this laptop. The brightness also allows for better use indoors and outdoors. It might be little, but that extra brightness goes a long way, especially during peak of summer. Now, the notch is still there. It's not going anywhere. It's ugly, it's unnecessary in my opinion, but it does go unnoticed after a while. And with that notch, it houses the camera. It is an upgrade from the M1 and it's not so bad. It wasn't up bad on the M1 by any chance, so this is a nice addition to have, especially for people that are working from home. The speakers are great, on par with the M1 MacBook Air. I'm really not particular about the speakers on laptops, so far they are loud and have enough bass for my music. 
With all that being said, should you buy the M2 MacBook Air? And it's hard to say because the base model of this right here is $1199 and that puts it in a weird position because a brand new M1 MacBook Air is $999 and a refurbished model is $849. Now a lot of people that go for MacBook Airs generally go for it because it's cheaper. Now it is a dilemma but from a practical standpoint, the M1 MacBook Air at $849 refurbished gets you almost the same performance battery life and design for $400 cheaper or you can get the M2 MacBook Air and get a MagSafe charger, a better display and a slightly better performance. Now is that enough for some people? Maybe. But if you're a student on a budget starting out as a content creator, then the M1 MacBook Air provides better value and that is exactly what you should buy. Thank you guys for watching and I'm curious to know your thoughts. Is the M1 MacBook Air better value than the M2? Comment below and let me know. And do not forget to like this video and smash that subscribe button as they say. My name is KJOS and I will catch you guys in the next one where I talk all things tech.